Hello and welcome to Doc Plays Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at AQA A-level chemistry and we're going to be looking at transition metals ligand substitution reactions. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to record and explain ligand substitution reactions using water, ammonia and Cl-. Know the ligand substitutions for copper 2 with Cl-. Explain the transition metal reactions of oxygen and water with haemoglobin in the blood and understand the stability of complex ions and the Chile effect. Also, don't forget to go and check out uh, my website at drclays-alevelchemistry.com where we've got live webinars and heaps of resources to help you improve your grades. So, before we go any further, let's just decipher what we mean by a ligand substitution. So, it's simply the case when one ligand is swapped for another ligand. And since there's a change in ligand, there's a change in the energy gap between the two d orbitals, and therefore there's a change in energy that can be absorbed, and so a colour change is often observed when we change the ligands in a complex. So the first ligand substitutions we can look at are with water and ammonia, and the key here is that these ligands are of a similar size to each other and therefore little real change is observed. In both of these examples we've got a complex ions of cobalt where we've got a coordination number here of six. Uh, we've got six ligands and we've got an octahedral sample. This particular one happens to be pink uh, we don't actually have to recall that one. Um, and if we were to add six ammonias, now to add six ammonias, you've probably really got to use concentrated NH3 when you're looking at a reaction. Aqueous ammonia simply gets an acid base reaction to occur. And in this reaction, we replace all of the ammonias with six waters. And once again, we form a coordination number six. Uh, for this cobalt ammonia complex and again we've got an octahedral color. Notice as I said before because we're changing the ligands we start off with a pink substance or solution and we end up with a straw which is sort of a yellowy color at the end. Just to complete here if you were going to write the equation for this reaction well we'd start off remember in square brackets because we're talking about a complex with a charge with six waters with the three plus charge we're adding six ammonias now it's not impossible to conceive that you could uh, replace a different number of ligands but here we're looking at six and we would form cobalt nh3 Again, a neutral compound and three plus plus the six waters at the end. So the example does require you to know one particular example here, and that is of the copper complex, which is where we have a six water hexaqua copper complex, and here. If you're drawing this compound, just make sure you include the lone pairs of electrons. And if we react this one with ammonia, so that's with NH3, we get a slightly different effect now. For reasons that you don't need to worry about in the course, this actually forms a compound which has got just four four ammonias around the square plane like so and it has water in the top and bottom position like this therefore we're simply seeing a substitution here with four ammonias and therefore we replace it here with four water molecules. Once again here we're still six coordinate in both examples therefore we're still octahedral 
in both examples but the difference here is the number of ligands that we change we start off on this side with a pale blue substance while on the right hand side again when charged so we're now a deep blue colored solution again if i was going to write out the equation for that i would have in square brackets copper h2o6 2 plus i should strictly speaking have the aq in here 4 and H3, again you probably have to use concentrated ammonia to do this reaction. If you use um, aqueous ammonia, you tend to form um, the acid-base reaction, you get precipitate formed. And then we get CuNH3 4 h 20 2 This is aqueous again because we're charged plus the four water ligands. So that is one specific example that the AQA exam board require you to remember. So the next example we're going to look at in ligand substitution is if we're using Cl minus. Now we generate Cl minus normally by adding HCl and that's normally concentrated HCl to the solution. The thing about this is it's a large charged ion and so what that means is you're going to have short dated covalent bonds because there's going to be a strong attraction to the nucleus and also it's going to be physically difficult to get more than four ligands around the central metal iron that's because we're looking at 3d metals and therefore it's difficult to get more than four around the central metal iron what that means is our coordination number, if we're looking here with our water complex, starts off with an octahedral shape where we've got six waters and a two plus charge. So we're talking about an aqueous solution, which is a nice pale blue color. We add our Cl minus in solution. And what we end up forming is a tetrahedral complex, which is yellowy green. And now instead of having six ligands, it's reduced down to just four ligands, each one with a negative one charge. So our charge on the overall complex is two minus. Again, we're AQ and we've got six waters that leave. Um, that's obviously a liquid. Because we've got a, both a change in coordination number We've also got a change in ligand. We therefore have a change in color from pale blue to a nice yellow green color. And that's because we see a change in coordination number, a change in overall shape, and a change in ligand. Now the exam board doesn't specify any particular elements or complexes for you to recall for this just that ligand substitution occurs for co minus where we tend to get a change in coordination number and a change in shape now going to look at ligand substitution in hemoglobin and hemoglobin is a protein obviously here that we find in our blood and most people know it's used as the the carrier for oxygen it consists of, importantly, a central iron 2 plus iron and a globin molecule or protein. And this is massive. It's very large compared to the complex iron at the top. We have then a multi-dentate porphyrin ring, which has got four dative covalent bonds, all via the nitrogen atoms. And then we have the space at the top here which is available for ligand substitution. Here we see the water exchange with oxygen. Now, in the lungs, where we have a high concentration of oxygen, what happens is the water uh, exchanges with the oxygen and we get a ligand substitution reaction going from water 
to the oxygen. The haemoglobin then moves around the bloodstream to where, wherever it's required. And then what we observe is whenever we get to the point at which oxygen is required to be used, we then see the reverse because we've got a low concentration of oxygen and we observe the ligand substitution here from oxygen back to water. Now this all works fine as long as there's no carbon monoxide present because unfortunately the carbon monoxide forms a stronger bond to the iron 2 and this binds irreversibly to the iron center and since it's got a stronger interaction it uh, doesn't get released and it forms a stronger dative covalent bond and therefore can't be replaced by water or oxygen and we say that our iron 2 plus has now been poisoned and if you get too much in your bloodstream, you end up with carbon monoxide poisoning, which of course can lead to death. Now, the stability of complex ions depends on one of two things. If you've done the Gibbs free energy uh, video, then you should be aware of this. If not, I suggest you go and check it out. Uh, Gibbs free energy suggests that any reaction is feasible when delta G is less than or equal to zero and is formed up from two terms, an enthalpy term and an entropy term. And this is really important when we look at complex stability because the stability of the complex is going to either be determined by the strength of the dative covalent bond or perhaps some sort of entropy term as we're about to see. In this first example we're going to look at iron hexa aqua complex which is 3 plus aqueous and we react it with 6 Cn minus. Now the Cn minus here forms a stronger dative covalent bond And therefore, the reverse reaction is unlikely and it virtually all lies over to the right hand side, simply the fact that the CN iron bond is very much stronger than the H2O bond, it's got a stronger bond enthalpy. As a result, delta G is less than zero at almost all temperatures and therefore lies very much over to the right hand side if iron ever comes in contact with cyanide. You'll also notice that this is why cyanide is also poisonous within the body. In this next example though, where we've got this nickel NH362 plus complex, the dated covalent bonds here are all nickel to a lone pair on a nitrogen, or perhaps I should say it's the other way from the nitrogen to a nickel. If we look at the product, well, we've still got a nitrogen to a nickel forming. Therefore, the change in enthalpy in this reaction is going to be very low. And since the enthalpy change is going to be very low, that means the Gibbs free energy is going to be more dominated by the T delta S and importantly the entropy effect that we see here. And what this ends up meaning is that in this reaction we've got four particles on the left hand side because we've got the complex and the three ligand. This is a bidentate ligand. And we got six 
sorry, seven on the right hand side where we've got the complex plus the six ammonias. Therefore, as we go from left to right, we've got an increase in entropy, and therefore the reaction is feasible because we've got a low enthalpy change and an increase in entropy, and hence the equilibrium lies quite heavily over on the right hand side. This is commonly known as the chillate effect. And we can observe it in a host of different examples. I'll show you another one now. So another common example here of the chillate effect is with this chromium complex, where again we've got six ammonias surrounding the three plus ligand. We've got EDTA, and if you want to see that, what EDTA looks like, go and have a look at our introduction to transition metals. But importantly, it's a multi-dentate ligand consisting of four nitrogens and two oxygen ligands. Apologies, it consists of four oxygen ligands and two nitrogen ligands. The chromium NH36 has got just one complex and one ligand, so we've got two moles or particles on the left hand side, while on the right hand side we're forming seven particles. So once again, we see an increase in entropy or a positive entropy change. Perhaps would be a better way of describing this. Um, the enthalpy change is still fairly low, maybe towards zero, and therefore the reaction is feasible because we're seeing an increase in entropy. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to check out my website by checking the cards in the top right hand corner. And at the end of this lesson, you should be able to record and explain ligand substitution reactions of water, ammonia, and Cl minus. Know the ligand substitution for copper 2 plus with Cl minus. Explain the transition metal reactions of oxygen and water with hemoglobin in the blood, along with carbon monoxide poisoning. And understand the stability of complex ions and the chelate effect. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.